You just got your license, you just passed your test, and everybody's reaching out to you. Brokerages from all over the area are calling you, texting you, wanting you to come in for coffee or an appointment, and you're feeling like it's dating all over again, right? That was an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, so you just got your real estate license or you're thinking about getting your real estate license in this, like now what, right? You, you take this test, you take this course, it really doesn't prepare you for the next stage steps of what's going on. And we have this conversation with so many different agents, so many different people that reach out to us and say, you know, I really want to get into real estate, I just don't know where to begin. So today we're just going to kind of talk to you about, you know, the things that we wish we knew when we got into the business Absolutely. because um, our story is just kind of I think, very much like everybody else's, right? So he convinced me to get my real estate license and said, I think you should, think you should do this. And I was like, okay, whatever. Everybody's a realtor. Like, you know, I, I didn't really take, I didn't go into it with a plan. And fortunately, we have business experience and we've owned our own businesses. So for us, it was just a very natural thing. But again, not having that plan and not asking myself some key questions in the beginning made the first few years very frustrating. I was fortunate, I, I quickly recognized that I needed a mentor. And so I was very fortunate to have a good friend that was you know, in the business that took me under her wing and yeah. that first year, because I can tell you if I didn't have that support, I would have fallen flat on my face. So I don't know, so we're gonna kind of go through some key questions that you should be asking yourself as you get started in this business? Absolutely, yeah. I think the first, the biggest question right out of the gate is what's your intent? And what's your intent meaning, are you planning on doing this full time? Are you planning on doing this part time? Because there's two very different paths right out of the gate to go through, depending on how you answer that. Um, and in addition to support, right? The support that you get from being full time versus the support you get from being part time can also very great. Right. right. So I think it's important that I guess the thing is just kind of getting clarity on what you want, mm -hmm. right? So really sit down and think about it. You're essentially opening a business. This isn't a job anymore. And so what does that look like? Is this a part time business for you? Is this a full time business for you? How are you going to get clients? How are you going to get that business going? Do you have money set aside for, you know, a couple of months? If you're going in full time, for example, as if right. you're going full time, you know, do you, it's, even if you get a client, the day you get licensed, you still have to show them home, you have to find them a home, you have to get them under contract, you have to get to closing. Do you have reserves set up to cover yourself for 90 days, yeah. you know, to cover your expenses? Like these are all things that I think that you need to really sit down and get clarity on. Just kind of like really know what it is that you hope to get out of this career. Correct, yeah, and, and I think the other thing that comes in there is how much time are you gonna put in, mm -hmm. right? Because if you are doing this part time and say you have another job or you have other commitments, who, are you available to show homes? Are you available to do the paperwork? Do you have the knowledge to do the paperwork the correct way? Because that's a lot of times where we see the, the largest mistakes and that's where things can get dicey if, you, if you're not on top of the paperwork and the deadlines, you can, you can put your client's escrow money at risk, right? Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to be in that situation. Um, and then inspections. Who's going to go to the inspection? Do you have time to go to the inspection? Do you understand the inspection report? How to, how to reiterate those findings to your clients? How to negotiate those repairs and or a monetary credit for the findings that do come up during the inspection period? Yeah, so I think that, you know, the questions to think about are like, do you see yourself leading a team or do you see yourself having a certain skill set and being on a team and i know there's a lot of questions about teams and what that looks like and the reason why i bring that up is i think it's really important to look at yourself and look at what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses you know and what does that look like is your plan to start out as a solo agent and you really want to build this as a business and you want to build it out as a team and are you prepared to grow the business that way where you're going to end up taking on a lot of expenses. Team leaders take on a lot of expenses in order to build a team. It's an organization at that point. It's not just a solo agent. Or are you somebody who's getting into the business saying, you know, a lot of times it's like fourth or fifth career for people when Correct. people get into yeah. real estate. So is this something where you're going to come in and say, I really wish that, I don't want all of that, all of those headaches in the past. I just want to be able to come in. I want to sell houses. I want to go show houses. I want to interact with people. 
So maybe you are that maybe you are the perfect person for a team because then there is the support, there's the transaction coordinator to do all that stuff. You're not taking on the expenses, you're letting somebody else, you're leveraging somebody else for that. So again, I think just really getting that clarity as to, you know, what is the time commitment that you have? What is your 10-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan? Where do you see yourself? And you see yourself just, you know, in it for a few years because you know this is kind of, and then going to part time. There's just so many questions. So I guess we can we can ramble on about this forever, but I think really getting clarity at the beginning is really important. And we do uh, recommend there's a few different tests that you can take that'll help you get that clarity. The first one is the disc, disc assessment test. Correct. Right. Yep. That one's really I think important for you to learn about yourself and where your strengths are. Right. If you're not a high driver then being a team leader is probably not the best thing for you. Yeah. You know, so, and if you want to take that test and then ask us questions about it, we're always open to kind of sure. go over that yeah. with you. And then we also have a clarity report, a free clarity report that we offer to all of our agents that I'll put a link to that on here. So you can kind of go through and it'll bring you through a lot of the questions and things that you should be asking right. as to how to get started in this business. I think it's important that you guys understand what your strengths and weaknesses are so that you can offset that on the path you choose. And that can be the brokerage you choose, that could be the brokerage or the team that you choose or your solo path, but the brokerage there definitely has a lot of impact, I think, on where you fall in the disc assessment and what your needs are. And then in addition to the part-time versus full-time, right? There's a lot of different recommendations I would have for a full-time agent versus a part-time agent on what brokerage to even choose and, and or whether or not to be on a team. Right. And I think that, you know, we, like I said, the first few years for us, they were great. We were successful, but they were also very frustrating because we lacked that clarity. And so we were kind of building the plane as we yeah. flew it instead of like having a strategy and a plan in place. So I think a lot of that comes down to the next question, which is how to pick the right brokerage. And there are, and I'm not going to try to go into one's better than the other because there's so many different brokerages okay. that are great. And I think it really just comes down to, again, what that clarity is and like what it is that you're looking to achieve. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is like, who works at that brokerage, right? If you're interviewing with a, because you're going to be a rock star when you come out, right? You're going to feel like you are the most important person in the world. You're going to get more phone calls than you can imagine, and they're all going to promise you everything. And not even that they're promising you anything. They're going to promise you the things that they have, and it may sound great, but it might not be the right thing for you. So ask the question, if you're thinking you need to be on a team or that you want to be on a team, like who is at that brokerage? Not only who, like the support staff, but who are the other agents there? And I think that that's really important, especially if you're looking at a team. Right. I think that that's important for a few reasons. One, culturally, right? Do the people that make up the majority of that brokerage or the leaders of that brokerage, do they fit the culture, values, and environment that you want to put yourself in and also that you want to align with, right? The other thing is what is the... What is the sentiment in the market of that brokerage, right? There's brokerages that have really good reputations and then there's some brokerages that unfortunately do not. And how does that align again with where you're going and, and what your goals are? And then I think that, you know, looking at the market share that they have, like what type of market share does that brokerage or that team have in the area that you want to work? Yeah. Right? You can find a really strong, amazing brokerage that may kill it in one market, but that's not really where you want to focus. So I think it's important to take that into consideration. And then the other thing is what type of business does it focus on? Do they do commercial? Do they do residential? Do they do more investment business? You know, um, there's so many different ways to do this business. And again, having that clarity and like saying like, I really, he works a lot with investors. Like that's something that he loves. That's his passion. And that works for him. Um, I love the residential side of it. I love the warm and fuzzy being with the people, helping them find their first home. Mm -hmm. So it's finding those you know, ways that you can plug in and you can really tap into what's important to you. Correct. Yep. And then tools, right? What tools does the team or the brokerage provide that you have access to and how are those particular tools going to grow your business to get you to the goals and the lifestyle that you want to get to? That, that to me is huge. I mean, that's one of the biggest differences I've noticed from team to team and brokerage to brokerage are the, the support and the tools. Yeah, and I think that that's really key and that's something that we just, you know, 
again, didn't think about when we got into the business. Like, I I didn't have a CRM. I didn't have anything when I first got started. And so I had, like, a notebook. I mean, literally, it was, like, a binder, like, this thick, where I'm, like, writing notes and information on every deal and every client so I don't forget to keep up with them. So do do they offer a CRM? Do they offer leads? Maybe they don't offer leads, but do they offer platforms for you to be able to utilize to generate generate your own leads? Um, Trainings, when are their trainings held? Where are their trainings held? You know, if you're gonna be a part-time agent and the brokers that you're interviewing, they have all these amazing trainings, but they're only held during the day and you have a nine to five job, how are you gonna take those trainings? And I think the other, the biggest thing that I see is initial training, great, right? Every brokerage, I think every brokerage does a pretty good job, but like for new agents, right. like teaching you contracts, basic stuff the like basics, that. Yeah. How do you get from being there to the next level? That's where I feel like a lot of places mm-hmm. fall, and I think that that's where you have to have that vision. And you need to be asking the questions so that you don't outgrow your brokerage. Right. I, I think we've seen that across, you know, different brokerages over the years is there's a lot of great ramp up training. And then it's like, okay, good. You're on your own. Good luck. Right. And, and unfortunately, I think that's why so many agents kind of falter out and they don't renew their license at the two year period because they don't know how to go from, you know, that say first $3 million in sales to how do you. How do you go to now six million? How do you go to seven, 10, 20 million dollars? That's where I think the biggest gap in training has been from what we've noticed. Mm-hmm. And, and what's your plan, right? Does your plan even involve you getting to three or four million dollars in sales or are you just doing this to sell one or two houses a year? Right, and so that's I, I would say that's a big thing is like what is the progression plan? Because we yeah. found that um, we are part of some great brokerages and I would never complain about them because they got us to where we were, right? Like that we learn. But then we were hitting a ceiling and we realized that we outgrew them. So how do you get yourself in the right rooms with the right people? I think that if anything, that's the biggest thing I've learned in life in general is being in the right rooms with the right people sure. that can guide you is huge. Yeah, so sure. those are the biggest things that I would say that I would now, looking back, I would interview a brokerage. I went so into it getting started that I was like, I just kept asking splits. So I went to, my very first brokerage I went to was like a transaction fee based brokerage, mm-hmm. right? No systems, no support, really no training right. even. Nobody even really went into the office, but I, it was cheap, right? And I was like, this is great because I don't know if I'm going to do well, if I'm going to come out the gate and make some money. And so what I realized is I was actually having a lot of the success, which was great, but those transaction fees add up real quick right, not, <laughs> when yeah. they don't cap out somewhere. So then I was like, whoa, 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 like actually I'm paying some money right? Absolutely. and there's no systems, no support. So then that's when we found the next brokerage that we went to and it was awesome because I'm like, oh, I've got systems, I got support, I got some training, but then the model wasn't great for growing a team. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think about having a team because that well, wasn't yeah, part of my plan. Yeah, when we went there, that wasn't the plan. That wasn't the plan. But so our goals changed. Our goals changed. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe this doesn't make sense. So then we went to the next one. Right. Did well there. And then we felt like they, but then we felt again, we didn't have the right people in the room. We were like, okay, we keep hitting the same number every year. Why aren't we growing? Why aren't we hitting that next Good. level? And we're like, we need to be in the room of people that are doing business that we can't even dream of right. yeah. and um and getting in those rooms has helped us tremendously Absolutely. so again yeah. having that clarity is just key yeah i agree and, and surrounding yourself with the right people i think is what that comes down to the people that are trying to get you to where your goals are um it's i, I related to sports a lot right if you want to get better at any sport you're going to train with or play with people that are already better than you right you don't want to go out there and just compete against people that aren't up to your level so that you can win every time. You want to compete against people that are already better and more successful than you because now it's going to help you level up. And and they're going to share tips, tricks, things like that. I mean, the reality of it, guys, is there's a lot to be said for experience. There's a lot to be said for how much time and money brokerages, team leaders have put into trying this product, trying that product. Another thing you'll realize is when you get licensed, yes, you're going to get calls from 
every brokerage in town trying to get you to come in for a meeting, but then the calls are going to start coming in of, hey, buy this product, and it's only going to cost you one deal a year in commission, but you're going to make five, or check out this CRM. There's always going to be a new shiny object literally every single week being presented to you on people that are trying to sell you their product that'll help you grow your business. And some of them are phenomenal, some of them are not phenomenal, right? So being able to go to somebody at your brokerage or on your team that has already tried different products and can help guide you in what works and what doesn't work, there's a lot to be said for that. Because I can tell you, over our career, we've easily spent over six figures in products that did not work, right? So, but we didn't know. You don't, you know, you believe when you're sold the product, you believe it's gonna work, you believe it's going to help you, and you don't really know until you do it, right? So there's a lot to be said for those experienced agents as well. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing that I learned too is that there's so there's so many different ways to do real estate, yeah. right? Like we talked about it earlier, like you can do, um, you can have the uh, commercial side, residential Absolutely, side, yeah. all of that, and even when it comes to that, like where do you get your business from? And getting clarity on what fuels you, what your passion is, and that's where you get your business from. And just having a business plan out the gate mm -hmm. would save so much time and so much headache. And just really honing in and getting that clarity. Because I can say that, you know, I've learned that you, if you don't like it, you're not gonna do it, Correct. right? And, and you go into these rooms and you go into these trainings and they're gonna tell you, you need to be doing this, you need to be cold calling, you need to be door knocking, you know, this person is killing it or that. And you see these people killing it in different ways. So you're like, I gotta do that. I gotta put that in my business model. But it's not what's natural to you. So having that just personality assessment, realizing what your strengths and weaknesses are is so key because yeah. if it's not natural for you, it's not going to work. I agree. You know, yeah. and we've built our business because we love being involved. In, we both are extremely high eyes on the disc personality assessment. So we love being around people. We love being a part of the community. Yeah. That's how we built our business. I can tell you right now, I'm not somebody to go out door knocking. He tried it. They called the cops. <laughs> Didn't work out so Didn't well. Didn't work out so well. So again, it's finding what works for you and having that clarity and finding a brokerage or a team who can support you in that way to help you get to that vision. I think that's kind of the way to sum it up. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's like, yeah. So there's some key questions to ask. I'm going to put a little document um, attached to this, or maybe you know, it's with the clarity report. We can go over it. Yeah. Of like, what are the questions you need to be asking when you are interviewing teams, brokerages, whatever? If you would love to, um, I'd love to talk to you about it and deep dive into it. I absolutely. think that this is something that we both really we always get excited with business planning and right. stuff. It gives us the opportunity to get that fixed without actually going and starting a new business. Yeah. Um, but yes, if you want to talk about it, go over the Clarity Report. We're more than happy to sit down and go over that with you. Um, and if you haven't gotten licensed yet, we can help you with that. We have some resources available where you can, we can help you get the license, get you through that process. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I hope that wasn't like too all over the place for y'all. We just always end up having these conversations. So we're like, let's just do videos on it, right? right? Yeah. Like, let's, let's share it. Let's right. talk about it with everybody. So. I don't know, that's it for us. If you guys have any questions, um, our contact information is in the post here. So just get in touch with us. Okay. Awesome. Got anything else? Nope, we're okay, good. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya.